Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about the basics of Arm 3D, but don't be alarmed, I'm not just going to talk about the basics. There's also some very useful tricks that you probably didn't know, so stick around. So, no trees, that's the main way you actually code logic inside of Arm 3D. You can use alternative language like hacks. Well, hacks is actually the primary language because logic nodes are just hacks bundles. They're just boxes of hacks code that you have behind the scenes when you compile your actual game. So, Either way, you're, you're making hack scripts whether you do it directly or indirectly, but there are other alternative languages that you can use inside of Arm 3D. They're not very well known, but let's talk about logic nodes. How do you actually apply them? How do you get started? More importantly, what can you do with them? So the basics of logic nodes are obviously you have to go to an object, select the object, go down to the properties window, go to the armory properties, the armory traits, and here click the plus icon. This will give you the option to create a node tree. But make sure when you do that, the first letter is always a capital letter. If not, it's going to spit out an error because it doesn't like that. So what you want to do now is open up the logic node editor window and this is where you can actually code your logic once you've selected that node tree. So here is where you put all your logic nodes but the most important thing to remember is that this isn't just the only place you can put node trees. For example if we go to our scene there is also the same window and the same possibilities. The main reason people find this confusing is the fact that there are two possibilities. You can either upload a node tree to an object or to a scene. Why is that? Why are there two different ways of doing it? Well essentially when you're making a node tree you have to host it on either well, one of these two options and the reason is if you don't then it's not going to run in your actual game and this can be good this might be something that you need for example if you click that fake user icon it still will be packaged and built when your game is exported but it won't be run automatically you have to apply it manually well not manually but with code at runtime in your game and that might be something that you want for example a power-up we do have many nodes in the separate category of the trait that allow you to set all these different node trees and different traits two different objects and you can do this programmatically uh, by not necessarily knowing the trait that you're looking for. For example you can get a trait that's attached to an object you're colliding with. This can be very useful for doing things like power-ups. However we can also use the scene tab for uh, code or logic nodes that aren't actually in your game currently. For example like a storage facility for code. I've talked about using different empty tabs as a sort of backstage for uh, 3D models that you don't actually need in your game currently. Well this could be the same principle or you could use this in the same principle of essentially having all these different node trees that you're only using at runtime so you're not applying them to individual objects specifically before you run your game. It's very important to understand what you're doing with your node trees and where you're actually placing them because it's as important where you're putting these node trees as it is what's inside of them. For example, if you have a node tree with some very uh, important node trees such as removing critical objects such as the main player, that can't be in the same script as the, same, as the main player because it will be removing its own logic. So it won't be applying any more of that code because that code will be gone. And so remembering and figuring out where these node trees should be in advance is critical to making sure the game doesn't break and delete itself. Now these are situations that aren't super typical. If you're a beginner and you're not too sure what you're doing, just apply these node trees to the object themselves and I'm sure you'll be fine. It's mainly for bigger things such as uh, global score systems that I tend to opt for the scene traits, the scene node trees. Uh, because they won't get deleted so I'm guaranteed of the fact that this trait won't break and uh, essentially just beware what you're building and understand what you're doing uh, so that you don't have uh, any misfortune in the future. Thank you so much for watching this really important video. I hope you understood what I was trying to tell you here and that you will avoid many mistakes in the future. Remember the most common mistake that most army users have is that they make a node tree and then they're confused because none of it is working and it's only because they forgot to apply it anywhere. They didn't host it on an object or on the scene. So remember if you have a problem that might be your go-to solution. Check that it's applied somewhere. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.